Okay, hey you guys, we're super stoked here in California. That means we're super excited and it's really great to see you guys coming in from all over the world. I mean, hey, we've got a special show, so I'm glad you're piling in here from Germany, from Chicagoland, of course. Hey, we've got another Southwest Chicagoland, multi-Chicago people, and Michigan, Portland, Oregon, Albuquerque, yeah. Kansas City. This is awesome. Well, listen, I'm going to get this thing started right away because we've got a lot to do here this morning. And we've got some really cool news coming up a little bit later. And of course, our special guest, Dan the Man Milner, in one minute here. We're getting kind of set up behind the scenes. But anyway, you guys know who I am. But if you don't know who I am, I'm Mark Silver, a photographer in Carmel, California. And the show is brought to you by our friends at Bay Photo. Uh, listen, these are their specials, 25% off on metal and bamboo ornaments. That's kind of fun. 25% uh, off on albums. 15% off on metal prints. Those are really cool. I've got a couple of them. And as always, you'll get 25% off on your first order. So take advantage of that. We want you guys to print, right? You've heard that message, and it's super important. Bay Photo will help you get those things made, whether it's an ornament or something on your wall or whatever you want. They'll help you make it. Okay. Don't forget, also, subscribe if you haven't already and enable the bell so you don't miss any of our shows. Well, without further ado, let's bring on our guest, Dan, the man, Milner. Ba-boom! Yeah, it's me. I'm here. <laughs> no glasses I love the today. Fact that we've got we've got India, we've got Delaware, Germany, Panama, um, Albuquerque, of course. I mean, the Berkey checks in. Oh, yeah, always got to represent here the local local angle. Istanbul. God, there are all these places I haven't been yet that I'm uh, post COVID. I'm going. We're, we're I'm, vicariously I'm visiting with you guys. Delaware. So am I supposed to talk about this image and what made it so hard to make? Yes. Jared, do you have that ready to go? Yep. Yeah, I've, got, I've got one image here. All right. So I'm going to go to that yeah, same got. screen that we were on here, right, Jared? There it Boulder. is. Okay. This Boulder, Colorado. It's a great cycling town. Let's hear about it. What was the, what's okay, the story so, behind this? Uh, when you asked me to send a bunch of images that were that were sort of challenging to make, I sent I sent three. Okay. And um, this is the one that sort of popped out in my head when I sent it, and I sent it specifically uh, in magazine form because I just want to remind everybody. And your sponsor today, obviously Bay Photo, and obviously I work for Blurb. Yeah. Um, I print everything, and so this is a magazine that's 240 pages of work from about a 10 year span, covering every story I ever did in that time frame. But this is an image I made. I started covering the political conventions in America back in 1992 in Houston. I did San Diego in 96, and I did L.A. in 2000. And these were remarkable events to photograph. Um, they were violent. They were interesting. They were a challenge in every way because you just had to be ready for anything. Houston was incredibly violent. It was the first time I was working for I was working for the Associated Press. I was I was stringing for them, meaning I was freelancing. They gave me a press credential. I got kicked and punched and clubbed and, and run over on horseback by the Houston Police Department. And I was it really opened my eyes about what it was like to be a photojournalist. San Diego was very, very calm and peaceful. And this photograph was from Los Angeles in 2000. And this was a whole different ballgame. Um, I got um, clubbed and kicked and gassed and punched and almost shot in the head with a rubber bullet. And you'll love this wow. because it sounds like it's right out of a movie. I was behind a barricade, a concrete barricade, in what was called the designated protest area. And there's always a designated protest area. And it's a place where the authorities have lined it out and mapped it out and said, okay, if you're here at the if you're here at the convention to protest, this is the legal place that you can protest. And inevitably, whether it was San Diego or Houston or LA, that goes really well for a couple of days. Yeah. And then for whatever reason, they decide it's no longer a legal protest area and they come in in force. So I'm in the protest area. You're hemmed in on three sides by chain link and razor wire. So there's nowhere to go. And in front of me are lines of LAPD and riot, riot gear. And everything's fine. 
everybody's protesting, doing their thing, and I am loading my Leica, one of them, yeah. and I'm behind this concrete barrier, and I dropped my roll of film. <laughs> so I bend down to pick up this film, and I hear screaming, and I pop my head up above the barricade, just my eyes like this, and I see the riot police coming, and they have these you know, rubber bullet guns, and they're just firing into the protest area. And the, there's an older photographer from behind me from Miami, and he gets hit right in the side of the head and goes down. And it's just chaos. And now it's it's about making pictures, but it's also about trying to get out of that protest area without getting, you know, beat up, arrested, whatever. So when you're working in and around law enforcement, it can be really tricky. And this is shot with a 35 downtown as the police went through and cleared out streets. And these are workers from somewhere behind this mesh parking garage uh, structure, this steel gate that came down. And I love it because of the layering. Yeah. You know, you've got foreground, midground, background. It's a very, to me a very dramatic photo and speaks a lot about these conventions where um, as soon as they happen, there's unrest on the streets. And you've got to be able to get in and get out because a lot of these people do not, these police do not want to be photographed. You know, Dan, and you've got to get close. S yeah. Sorry, we have a member of our AYP group, Nemi, who is 15 years old and she's been showing her images of getting right into these same situations. I mean, it's unbelievable. She's 15 years old. And I hope she pops in here so you can talk to Dan. Yeah, she, she is here and we have one of her images. So we'll definitely be okay. oh, cool. covering that. All right, let's 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 get past mine and get on to other people's. So that was, the, um, that was the, the story behind that image. And I did not get punched or clubbed during this image, but I got punched and clubbed making some others. And it's and, a challenge, uh, man. Yeah. That's okay. I don't miss those days. Yeah. Okay. We're glad you're with us and you made it through that. So should we dive in? Thank you for that story, Dan. Yeah. Let's dive Let's in. Dive Literally, in. we're diving into our first image. Yeah. Here we are. All right. All so right. this one um, comes uh, sec. I believe that's how you say your name. Uh, Life in the Shores of the Bosphorus slash Istanbul. That's a really nice frame. It is. There's not really anything I would change about that. You have one, the light is nice. You've got open shade. Great light, big reflecting light box off the water. Um, his The fact that you caught a peak action moment here, the muscles in his back are really key to the image for me. And then also the, the converging sort of diagonal lines of the bridge going in the background with all the tiny heads. Um, there's not really anything um, I would change about this image. I think it's, it's solid. I agree. I love it. All um, right. So Nemi just chimed in and she said that her story, that your story you just told reminded her of the May 1st demonstrations in Paris that she and her dad went to. And this is her image uh, from this. Again, Dan, uh, she's 15 from that and she's shooting it with a 35 millimeter lens. So she's right in there. She yeah, um, that's good. I mean, in, and here's the thing, a 15 year old female in some ways will have advantages in a scene like this because I would call her an anomaly, right? Most of the, the people that are out here covering this press, it's a, it's a weird situation. Now, on, what's interesting to me is not the person in the foreground, which is, he's, he's fine. I love the fact that his goggles are up and his eyes are sharp, and that sort of gives you this human relationship to him. He's also got basically a straight up military weapon, which is always interesting to think about sort of the militarization of the police forces around the world. Yeah. But it looks to me that the person to the far left is a female, officer uh -huh. and and it's interesting to me so i mean look anybody who has the guts to go out and cover this stuff it's definitely um it's definitely you know worth doing it's history unfolding and by the way you know paris is you go back to the 60s and look at the rioting in paris and some of the work that was done by magnum um you know this is a this is the latest version of that so kudos to her for for um you know going out and having the guts to do this it's a nice frame yeah it's it's um yeah agreed Oh. All right. Uh, oh, you, you had something you want to say, Mark? No. Okay. Uh, so this one comes from Amy Douglas. Amy. Uh, she has a series of self-portraits that she does. They're really good. This one's called Unable to See the Sun. That's really solid. It's graphic. It reminds me of a couple of different famous photographers that um, not that, that didn't really shoot self-portraits. They shot portraits that sort of, it, it has kind of a Ralph Gibson look to it um, for one. And uh, it's solid. It's graphic. I like the crop. I like the fact that you can't see the rest of the hand and whatever she's holding in her hand is, is very cool as an, a representation of the eye. I love it. I think it's an acorn solid. top and it's got a little, you know, cut out piece in it. Yes. Yeah, very interesting. 
And also, too, you know, selfies and self-portraits. I, I don't want to call this a selfie. I would call this a self-portrait. I think there's a big difference. Um, it's also a, what we can do during COVID. You know, it's one of those things where you've got to adapt to this changing circumstances around you. So it's a smart project to do during this time. Agreed. Absolutely. All right. All right. Uh, this next one is from Anderson Santana. Uh, he took this in um, in Japan in 2019. It was a very chaotic crossroads, but for this one short moment, it felt like it was just him and this gentleman. They were the only two people there. Yeah, I mean, look, it's um, it's a street image, and it's 100% based on on graphics. And what's interesting to me is it reminds me of some of the um, the color theory diagrams and forms that I used to study all the time in college, even though that's obviously a, a monotone image. But I love the fact that the center line disappears, sort of, um, it blends with the outside of the frame. So it almost looks like this image has legs or, it, or it's an image made of pants, if you know what uh -huh. I mean. And so um, I love it. It's graphic. It's simple. And this is like something really solid that you could use for a layout. I, I always look at, at, at photographs on how they, they could be used in a publication. And how many different ways of using type on a spread on a page like this, an image like this. So it's solid and graphic and basic, but not in a bad way. Basic in a good way. Boom. All right. This one is from Julian Ray. He was commenting that uh, it's currently the end of a uh, holy uh, sort of a holy season in Buddhism uh, with. Yeah, here it is, and so uh, this uh, this full moon marks the height of the second most important holiday in the Buddhist year, and so even though they can't, you know, do it quite traditionally what they have been doing, he's really enjoyed seeing the younger people uh, still having an opportunity to uh, experience this with, like, the light and all the magic that kind of comes with it. Yeah, it's nice, really nice light. Um, that girl is tiny, but look at that face. I mean, what a cute, cute girl. Um, I like it. I would also love to see a version of this that's cropped a little tighter. Mm. So if you brought the crop down to basically about here on the girl in the foreground, um, I would love to see if it eliminated the face of the girl in the background, just to kind of compare the two to see if it's a stronger image with just the singular face or... Uh, and it does that second face sort of compete with the first one. But in terms of like depth of field, sharpness, et cetera, it's nice to have the extra hand in the background coming in to light the additional candle. But the only thing I would experiment with just for fun is a tighter crop. Makes sense. I love the, you know, the lighting within the frame is always interesting because it's, it's beautiful light. Yeah. All right. This one is from Joe and it's Sheriff. Uh, captain comforts a young victim at the scene of a fatal motor vehicle crash. Wow. Yeah, so this is, um, the pictures like this get a pass in a lot of ways, right? So number one, you're working in not the most optimal lighting conditions, right? You're what looks like midday. There's nothing you can do about that. This is, a, this is an image based on content, and the content is really solid. You've got this traumatized kid, and you've got a cop who's trying to do the right thing, sheriff's department, it looks like, trying to do the right thing and comforting this kid. The thing that you don't, when you see an image like this, often what gets overlooked is how you have to navigate a scene like that. Because if you step, make one step in the wrong place or go too close or, or in, you know, in, uh, hinder one of these uh, first responders, you're in big trouble. Yeah. And so... Um, this is, you know, he's got a long lens. He's cleaned up as much as he can. Um, I would also maybe just like the last photo, I'm not sure that object in the foreground, oh, yeah. um, adds much. So maybe a tiny bit tighter on the crop, but other than that, it's a, it's a good, good photograph. It reminds me of a picture I made in Phoenix years ago of a situation very similar to this. So, I mean, good job getting in and navigating and recording this. A very tough situation. Yeah, the edges of the frame, in this case, in the foreground, it does it does pop your eye off of them where you want it to go. So you could also cheat in Photoshop or Lightroom and remove that. That's a, no, uh, Mark Silver. I'm going to slap your hand. He's not going to let me Just get away it. with Don't it. Don't remove it. What are you going to do next? Put a unicorn in the background? Absolutely. <laughs> gotta watch you now right. now i know I've i been, gotta watch you like a hawk i've been schooled by dan milner in public <laughs> i would never do that of course i'm just saying of one course could not. do that but you're right you, i think a simple crop and it's it's actually sitting there ready to be 
ready to be yeah, removed. Yeah, it's easy. Yeah, it's a it's a it's a simple crop, and I think it would clean it up just a teeny bit. Yeah. Yeah. All right. This next one is from Lorraine. After our previous show, uh, she was inspired to go down to one of the parks in San Diego, and she wanted to take some shadowy pictures since the lighting um, was very strong. And so this was one of the art exhibits, I believe. Yeah, I, my I think my only suggestion on this one would be similar to the last is I would I would I would either take one step forward or I would crop just a teeny bit. I'm going back and forth between the railings in the background. Yeah. Do those railings add or do they subtract from the image? I think the lower right hand corner, there's a little hot spot. So right. I would crop in a tiny bit on the right side, a little bit on the bottom, and I would call it good. I don't the, the railings to me because there's one on each side, they sort of pair off of one another. I don't mind them, but I would crop a tiny bit into the lower right hand corner, get rid of that hot spot because it's a little it's competing a little bit with some of the other space. And ideally cropping with your free your feet, so you've got the you've got it yeah. framed in the camera and just move forward just a little bit. Okay. Yeah. We don't we All don't right. do that Photoshop stuff. We we just want to do it in the camera. <laughs> always always try to do it in always camera. Always try for to sure. Do it I mean camera. it's a it's a good, you know, it's a good that's why photographers will print full rebate. And that means showing the outside of the negative when they when they're printing because it shows that you were able to to sort of do what you needed to do in the field and not rely on doing it in post. Exactly. All right. Here's one from Victor. He's got a lot of great images. This was taken at 5 a.m. A Hindu faithful uh, goes to the uh, Ganges River for early morning rituals. Yeah, so, um, yeah, th these pictures always amaze me because these are the kind of photographs. And this is where, where people who dedicate themselves to, like, street photography, the people who are good at it. There's a lot of people doing street that aren't good yet. And that's fine because that, that genre has exploded in the past couple of years. But this is a picture that a lot of people would just sort of walk right by. I probably wouldn't have made this picture because it just it doesn't offer me the ingredients that I'm looking for. But I look at his version of this and I go, this is really solid because this is about one spacing. He's not right on top of her or him. I can't see. I think it's a it, I don't know. It doesn't matter. It's he's not right on top of the subject. He's giving them room to breathe. And this is about light. And I like the way he's burned down the edges of the frame, sort of like a massive vignette, yeah. because your eye, it just forces your eye to go to exactly what he wants you to look at, which is this singular person on this lonely street. Uh, so it's very solid. And this is also really good for something like a cover, because you've got all that black space to run copy and text, and you still have room to get your point across. So it's, it's a solid pick. Agreed. All right. This is from Eric. He lives in Michigan, and he had a trip planned to go to Mexico, and he had to cancel it because of COVID. Uh, yep. However, he found that there were some migrant workers who were coming up to Michigan to pick apples, and so he took the opportunity uh, to work with these people, and he's been with them for a couple months, a couple more months that he's going to be uh, doing this, uh, working with these same people uh, till the end of the season. And this was one of the images that he took. I, I took this from the series. Migrant workers are keeping the country going. They have forever. And um, yes, they're in all 50 states doing all kinds of things. So um, there's a couple of things about this I love. One, the trash bag. Yeah. That's such a signature sort of um, style of, the, of that life that the migrant workers are doing. And it's a really hard life. Um, I like the fact that his, his hand is extended, which gives you a little bit of a foreground. Um, I would love to see the outtakes of this. Um, and this is the kind of thing where if I was working um, a scene like this and I'm shooting what I would say reportage, so I'm not orchestrating or moving or anything, um, at some point he's probably going to end up looking at me. And that's the only thing I would be looking for too. Like this is someone you could shoot an actual portrait of. You could take a side and say, look, I want to do a portrait. But he's in the middle of his job. I love the trash bag. He's got the look on his face is like he's tired. He's working. It's solid. It's a good, it's clean. There's no distractions in the background. Um, the, the, the wood is sort of heading you off in a nice dynamic element into the frame. So it's, it's solid. It's a good pick. I'd love to see the picks around it as well. And if you have those, go ahead and, you know, post them on AYP Club because we do want to see those. That would be awesome if you have other frames. 
Yeah, and I know that he does have other images from this same series there as well. So um, definitely check those out on AYP Club if you're part of it. And if not, why aren't you? Yeah, you should get it. It's a good story, too. The Migrant Worker story is a great story. Mm -hmm. It's been done a hundred times, and I hope it's done a hundred more because it's a really good story. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Here's one from our friend Bert, who's a very active member in the community. Bert. Uh, this was taken from a haunted house corn maze by the baseball stadium, uh, <coughs> and he he was able to bring in a small handheld light. Otherwise, it was totally dark uh, in the corn maze. So it's it's simple. It's clean. I wouldn't change anything. Um, and the light obviously made it. If it's dark, you're not going to get anything. So one, having a little portable light, and two, being able to use it correctly. Kudos. Um, well done. It's simple and clean and graphic, and obviously the eye is what makes this. It's There's nowhere else to look in the frame. You go directly there, so it's it's an effective, um, effective photograph. And we are doing a giveaway, yes, in a minute. We'll tell you what that is. We're going to give away one of my books, and... We've got an announcement about it as well. So hang in there, folks. We'll do that at the yep. end of the broadcast. All right. Uh, this one is from our friend Glenn. Uh, this is from a Day of the Dead celebration in California that he goes back to. I believe he said that he's been covering the same event in the same city uh, for a couple of ye years. I love Day of the Dead, Dia de los Muertos, and um, I pretty much love every single aspect of this um not only just the event itself, but what it stands for. I think it's something that the rest of the cultures in the world could take a chapter from and uh, and learn. This is I love square format. I don't know if this was shot with a phone or shot 35 and cropped, but it doesn't matter because of the two subjects. Um, I think the square works particularly well, and uh, the lighting is beautiful. It's simple. It's processed well. It's not over processed, and um, it's graphic simple and clean and you see those faces and you know what's not to like yeah, really. it's um it's it's really solid yeah where are all the crappy photos i was expecting <laughs> like you know pictures of people's feet and like stray dogs kittens Where's we have crap? such an amazing community these guys it's hard for me to pick images because there's just so many good ones. You know what I'm? This is what I've been doing, Dan. I tell you, you know, I usually find one or two little things, if if that, in each in each session. So we'll keep going. We'll see what happens here. Yeah, yep. keep them going. All right, here's one. It's a little selfish that I'm picking this one, but this is actually a photo by my father. Uh, uh -huh. He took this on his recent trip to Japan, and he uh, he really likes this one. He's thinking about getting it uh, printed. And this was right before uh, everything shut down. Uh, it's, uh, well, you know, Jared's dad, Mount Fuji, right? Yep. I'm surprised how much snow's on Mount Fuji. A friend here in town walked it, uh, hiked it in the 1970s, and he was telling me this really interesting story, which I won't share now, about trash and garbage back in the 1970s, which was kind of a surprise to me. Um, to me, what makes this is the, the fact that there's a foreground. That you have these these weeds, these these uh, plants in the foreground that are that are bent from the wind and billowing, and it gives you a sense of depth, and that's really the key. I've seen a zillion pictures of of Mount Fuji, but it's nice to have something in the foreground. The only thing I would think about, and maybe he has another frame of it, is in the lower right hand corner. You you see all the structures yeah. of the community, and maybe if he was if he had knelt down a tiny bit, you'd still have those leaves in the foreground. But you might eliminate that. So I would look maybe if there's another outtake from a slightly different angle. But otherwise, it's it's very solid. And that is one impressive mountain. And two, the wind blowing the snow off the top is really helpful. That adds a lot of drama to what might have been a little bit of a, a, a static image. But it's definitely adds a little uh, drama to it. You know, Dan, it's amazing how easily you can clean up an image by just kneeling down, just like the sports photographers do, because you can get rid of stuff. You know, yeah, you just, just eliminate because uh, like I don't know how to use Photoshop and I have no interest in using Photoshop. So I don't ever manipulate stuff inside of my image because one, I don't know how. Yeah. And so I'm, I do it in the field as best as I possibly can. And you can't always get where you're where you're, you know, your dream shot. But you can you know, you start to do it. And he probably does. The one thing that you would um, to get a little bit more subtle is the plants are against the dark aspect of the mountain. 
they're they're you know b- b- below the snow line and so that's 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 very helpful it yeah. works better than if they were on the snow so it may or may not work kneeling down but it would be interesting to see if he has another take all right sounds good uh here's one i just saw that they were in the chat let me find the image uh here it is uh so peter he took this during a black lives matter protest in brussels yeah um look i've seen a lot of these protest photos as as of late obviously um it's interesting to see that it's happening globally um obviously there's there's reform that needs to happen globally in this regard i think with this particular image i would take well and then and you may not be able to without getting you know manhandled but taking two steps forward because the primary element in this image is the woman on the right and the officer on the left and the officer in the middle with his mouth open yelling that is the drama of the scene yeah. so i would just simply crop the, the the arm on the right hand side isn't really adding anything but it's not and if you crop you're not going to lose anything over there you're not going to lose anything off the top and you're not going to lose anything on the left so i would just make a tighter version of it and i think it's very solid why don't you do that and put it back on uh, the ayp club so we can see it same for you other guys i think it would be really interesting to see your befores and afters on that we love seeing yeah. it like that's one of my favorite parts of seeing people, you know, trying out some of the changes. Robert Kappa right. said, you know, if your photos aren't good enough, you're not close enough, right? You're so not close enough. That's right. It takes it takes courage to take that one or two more steps, as you said, because all you got to do is is elicit their their anger, and you're now the target. Well, and look, you, you, you got to realize, too, that the, the police oftentimes they're afraid. Yeah. And that's a completely human response. If you're an officer and you're surrounded and p- tensions are high and you don't know what's going on, nobody wants to be in that situation. You know, and so you can't you, ha- you have to feel for for all, all the people involved here because emotions are high. And so if you take a step forward, that pl- that cop on the left may just be, you know, not happy, afraid and just says, oh, my God, they're coming. Yeah. And you don't want to be the one that like causes things to get worse. So it's a very delicate way of working. And um, they did a good job. I would just give a little crop. Yep. Right. Right on. All right. Here's one from Sumit Kerr. And uh, this was part of, they did a couple images. Redefining masculinity was um, the theme that they were going for with these images. Man, he needs to work out. Yeah, I know. Jeez. The guy, he's obviously laying on the couch way too much. Yeah, he's a little soft. Um, it's interesting. I mean, look, this is what I would you know, say is a conceptual photograph. And so there really aren't any rules outside of the concept that the photographer is trying to get across. So you've got the backdrop set up. Um, there is one thing. I would be curious to see what it would look like if you moved the subject about 10 feet away from the background. And so to do a version where the background is less in focus than it is now, right. and maybe the background and sort of the lines of the fold was part of what the photographer wanted. And if that's the case, then it, it works. It's clean. There's nothing distracting. I think the light on him is good because the light is allowing the, the, basically to model his body so that the, for example, his, his abdomen with the with the abdominal muscles, if the light was not quite right, you wouldn't see the definition in his body, which is important for the image because you're trying to heighten this idea of masculinity, but then softening it with the flower on the face. So it's good. It's solid. I, you know, I wouldn't necessarily change anything with this. All right. Our next one, this is from uh, John Convey. Uh, they wanted to take an image with their friend. And so they had them sit down and then they took a long exposure. And then soon after this image was taken, they were told by, uh, the club to, or by a security officer that they had to move. So they got this like just in time. Yeah. You know, security loves to tell you, you can't do stuff or move. I don't know what it is. And especially if you have a tripod, you know, tripods are like yeah. a homing beacon for people saying you can't be there. Um, it's interesting because my first take on this was that it was a homeless guy and the person probably what you couldn't see was maybe a sign on the other side saying, you know, I would love, um, your, your spare change or something. And then the concept of it was how many people walk by these people every single day. And I think that that's really solid, even though I know now that that's not what this image was. 
I think it is kind of that's I still like to look at it in that way of sense because it reminds me, you know, every day if you're in a major city, you're walking by people that are that are, you know, less fortunate that are asking for for donations or handouts. And so and there's millions of people that walk by them on a daily basis. So it's interesting and different. And I like the fact that you're playing with time exposure. You know, you're just trying yeah. new things. Um, the the circular shapes and the dis, and the line of people moving on this diagonal into the into the distant future is solid. Um, yeah, I mean, may I can get nitpicky and say crop a little on the right hand side to take out that small yeah. triangular shape next to the guy, but other than that, nothing. I think it's fine. Yeah, those little things that can pull your eye away. I mean, that's all. That's that's all that's we're it. talking about. Yeah. Yeah. The all structure right. is good. All right, here's one with Elise, our friend from Panama. Shot This was shot in Panama City, uh, the part of the town that was invaded by the United States in 1989 and has still been in decay. It's one of the poorest uh, neighborhoods. This is part of a personal project that she started in 2019 and is still continuing. Yeah, I can't remember the name of that neighborhood. Um, I did not actually go to that neighborhood, but the El, photographer... El Chor Chorello? Yeah, I believe that's and the, the photographer I went to Panama with, Andrew Kaufman, he's the one that has the project on the Panama Canal. Um, he spent a lot of time in that neighborhood as well. Um, I did not go there, but I absolutely love Panama. I love Latin America, but it's amazing. This is great for a couple of reasons. One, the light. Yeah. You've got really nice late directional light. You can tell because in the foreground, you have what looks to be a shadow from someone else who's out of frame on the left, but their shadow is throwing this beautiful dark line across the foreground. You've got this kid in the foreground who's out of focus. He doesn't need to be. He's basically a design element yeah. because your primary objective with this image is that clothesline, which is sort of a foreground slash uh, background all in one. It's clean, simple, great light. I love the cracks on the facade. I mean, Panama is like, it's a country of surfaces. The surfaces are so dramatic everywhere. Um, it's such a blend amalgam of, of finance and and um, and geopolitical chess and all kinds of stuff. So it's this is a really solid image. And black and white obviously makes it happen. I like it. I mean, look, I'm so used to looking at black and white stuff. I love it. Yeah. I'm sure, though, I mean, Panama, in terms of color, I shot half color and half black and white there, and the color is just insane. Yeah. It's like... Um, you know, Costco Viejo and places like that in the in the city are, um, if you're a color photographer, it's heaven. But I do love black and white, yeah. Okay. All right. You guys are doing awesome you're, work. I mean, I just got to say, it's... Yeah, it's really good. Uh, very cool. All right. This one's from uh, Gating Cormer. Uh, uh, it was trying to show the contrast of, like, new and old, you know, the older buildings and the newer buildings in the back. Yeah, you know, it's interesting. This, on the surface, this work is, this looks like a simple photograph. But the person, the photographer had to manipulate themselves into a position to show exactly what you just mentioned, the dichotomy of, of the old architecture combined with what we consider now modern, you know, new uh, architecture uh, and, the, and the contrast. And these are the kind of places that are getting torn down. And I think this to me is a historical photograph. It gets better with time because all of these buildings are marked, you know, and they're not, they're going to get knocked down, destroyed and, and basically gentrified. And then there's going to be another modern building. So I love photographers who are out doing this. This is not a sexy photograph. This is not something that's going to get huge amount of likes on social media. This is a testament to what's happening in all over the world. And it's a historical document. This is the kind of stuff that gets better and better and better with time. But here's the weird part, is that everyone I know looks at a picture like this and says, God, I miss that old architecture. Everyone. Yeah. And yet we tear it down and we build like pre, pre, you know, fabricated, terrible stuff. So I like it. Just keep doing this because this, because this is really intended to be a body of work that's exactly. showing transition and change. Yeah. That's what it reminds me of, Dan, when you talked about a linking image, you know, as part of a, a series. Yep. And I see this as a linking image. It doesn't stand out necessarily on its own, but if it's part of a series, it, it helps transition and tell the whole story. 
Yeah, because what you're going to get too is a human transition between this building and those high rises. You're going to see a very different kind of human being. You're going to yeah. see different socioeconomic standing. So this is like to your point, it's a transitional or link image. Yeah. And then as you're moving on foot from this building to those high rises and you're photographing on the street, you're going to see those changes in the people as well. So, yeah, this is this is destined for a body of photographs. Boom. Hey, I just want to say something. I just see Puro just joined us and I saw your comment this morning uh, from the photographer Farn. It was actually on one of your videos, Dan. Uh, the comment is, if you're a newer photographer, what should you spend your money on? This was a quote from the photographer, Fern. And he said, you know, get a cheap camera and spend 80% on education. And, you know, that's such a fresh viewpoint <laughs> rather than the other way around. Obviously, what we're about here at AYP is the educational aspect of it. So bravo on that. And uh, to that point, you know, I put a lot of energy into creating educational content for you guys. And I want to make sure you're taking advantage of it. You'll hear about in a minute, we're going to be giving you a half price on my book, my ebook. So stay tuned for that in a few minutes. And we're going to give one away also. All right. Our next one, this is from Maro. And they took this back in March and April, part of a series of them covering uh, what was going on with COVID in their country. This is from an intensive care unit uh, for Blue Cross first responders to a public massive morgue. Uh, this was in Bergamo. Wow. Yeah. So look, anyone who's out covering COVID, hats off because it's that's not easy and it's you know especially in the early days when we didn't really know that much about the virus and transmissions and things like that and people were still going for it and we're out covering it um this is really solid because the lighting is really good i mean you're you're in a place where the lighting typically sucks yeah but there's a light behind the subject and that's huge he's used the subject to block the light which is then backlighting him and showering this like massive section of beautiful light and it's casting that shadow from the subject directly at the photographer the lines in the floor are all showing up because of where that light is plus you've got the the diagonal roll of coffins and you have the cross and yeah this is a very solid and again historic moment this has never happened in our lifetimes it's we still don't know what's happening yeah. and so all of these images are going to get stronger and stronger and stronger a hundred years from now they're going to be looking at these photographs and saying oh my god this was the c19 years of in around the world so really solid and like hats off you know as long as you're safe doing this work and you're you're out there doing it go for it all right uh this next one is from julian and i happen to know he's talked about this um he is uh, doing a photojournalism oh, yes. class. And so this is another image. We we reviewed one yesterday. This is part of a series where he had to do um, five image story on a unfamiliar place. And so he found a, a pickleball court, uh, which is something he's unfamiliar with. And he went and took some images uh, there at a location that he was unfamiliar with. Yeah, I think this is a good good example of how to use a medium telephoto lens well, because what he's trying to do, and I'm going to steal a phrase from the photographer Peter Schwepker, which is he's trying to make, um, he's trying to find, wait a minute, what an, I'm trying, I'm going to ruin this quote. Something about, um, you got to, you got to reduce the clutter within the chaos. So basically you're outside, the lighting's maybe not optimal. You've got chain link and tennis courts and people and whatever. And he's basically dissected this. Yeah. And so the medium telephoto lens compresses the foreground to the background because those two guys at the net are very important part of this. They're the, they're the mid ground of that photo. If you shot this with a 24, it wouldn't work. If you shot it with a 300, it wouldn't work unless the guys in the background were in focus. And so he's sort of isolated on the ponytail, the little bind that she's using to hold her hair. You can see the racket in her hands. It's simple. It's, it's, it's as good as you're going to get in that environment for that kind of photo. If I, was, if I was trying to describe this and you were putting together a photo essay, this would sort of be those middle images right. where it's not right. a portrait. You're not seeing faces, but it's setting, it's setting the scene. And he's done it well by using a lens that eliminates clutter in the background. 
Good point. Yeah, and and it is a series, so keep developing that. We want to see that whole series because then it becomes you know a photo essay, which is obviously a series of images that can be linked together in a very strong way. Or if you're a photojournalist, you'll hear another term called the picture package. And so a picture, picture package, package is like a three to four pictures that would run in a newspaper. Not quite a photo essay, more than a single picture package. Good. Okay. All right. Uh, New vocabulary, oh, you guys. Is, the, the quote is trying to find clarity within the clutter. That's the Peter Schwepper quote, is clarity within the clutter. There you go. And I think that that's a really, that's what he's done here. All right. Uh, we've got one from Jeremy Lindenfield. Uh, this was taken at a rest stop in, I think it was Kentucky. Uh, and these are just two strangers, and they're just out picking flowers on the rest stop. Jeez, Kentucky. Well, how'd they get all the nice rest stops? You should see them here. Jeez, we don't have flower fields like that. Really? We have concrete and trash bins. Um, it's beautiful. This reminds me of so many photographs I've seen over the years. It reminds me of an Alex Webb picture from the border. Uh, mm. It reminds me of an Elena Dorfman picture from Albania. Uh, it's nice. The, fr the two women are the natural framing on the edges. You've got flowers running to the horizon. Um, now, in my head, I'm thinking, OK, if I if I stood up a teeny bit higher um, then and shot down, would that have cleaned up a little bit of the background? I don't know. I'm just throwing it out there. But it's solid. Plus, their hands are in motion. Both of their arms yeah. are moving towards other flowers. It's very nice. You even have a little bit of directional light from the left, which is hitting the woman in the foreground, her face, and giving her a little bit of rim light down the front of her face, which is a nice separation from the background. So yeah, solid pick. Dan, are you okay on time? Originally we were gonna go 45 minutes and we're almost there. If you- Yeah, I think, I think I'm okay. Okay, good. Awesome. If something bad happens, I'll let you know and I'll sign off. Yeah, if you gotta head It's off, our fault if, we, if you miss any appointments. <laughs> yeah. It's actually it's AY, AYP Club will take full responsibility for that. Yeah. All right. So this one is from Hunter Anderson. It's a cattle drive in South Dakota. Hunter. That's a good that's a good country boy name. Yeah. I, I have friends named Hunter. Um, I love it. One, I grew up on a at least in part in a ranch in Wyoming. So moving cows and, um, you know, seeing what's interesting is I love the, the South Dakota Cowboys, their hats. Totally different than Wyoming hats, by the way, yeah. Wyoming cowboy hats. But again, foreground, midground, background. You've got strong diagonals with the cattle moving. I also love the fact that the guy in the foreground, the Cowboys, is turning and looking away. I like the fact that that's a little individual moment. I love the front foreleg of the horse is in the air. Um, so he's in between steps. It's, and, and basically, you've got this nice tiled foreground, midground background. And he got lucky. He got, he got clouds. And, so he, and he crouched there, down low. As, as yeah, good good yeah. angle. Um, and even between the horse in the foreground, between the legs in the background sitting on the curb are two women, oh, which yeah. adds, Look to, at that. adds to the background. And you've got the uh, the American flag that's unfurled and not hanging straight down. So, yeah, the, very the solid. timing on those of, is amazing because you have the flag not touching the bull and you have the, the two girls right between the legs. That, yeah. Spot on. Very solid. Interesting too that they're moving cows down down a city street. I know. Which is, um, and I see no I like cow that. poop or horse poop anywhere, which is kind of remarkable. It's amazing. When you start moving that many animals around, <laughs> you're, oh yeah, something's going to come a, out. It's going to be messy. It's going to be messy. So you got an unmessy street, and that's that's also very remarkable. All right, very our solid. our next one is from Kel Bush. Uh, they took this image. Uh, they were not really a photographer at this point. They took it in North Vietnam uh, after, in 2015 after they finished landscaping apprenticeship. and But then they took this image with an entry-level DSLR that they had just bought. And this was when they took this image is when they fell in love with photography. I can see Well, why. that's that's good. Um, you know, and, and all of, all of that stuff doesn't matter. The entry level, I quote unquote, I wasn't a photographer. None of that matters because something made you make this picture. Yeah. And so you, you were a photographer. You just didn't know it yet. You hadn't stripped away the layers. Um, one, I love the subtle color of the entire frame, except for the woman in the foreground. And that color just 
pops. But I think what makes this for me is the natural framing of the mountains in the background and the fact that you have the sliver of road that carries you all the way through the frame. That's right. So you, you've got a clear subject, but that little sliver of white that cuts horizontally across the frame that leads your eye into the frame and all the way across. And then the natural, the mountains is a natural border. So yeah, it's super solid. And man, that looks heavy. Amazing. Great work as your first photograph or one of your first photographs. Yeah. Yeah. All right. This one is from Dieva uh, in India. Uh, she's been doing street photography for about a year, and this was one of the images she shared. You know, it's funny. There's repeating, um, repeating shapes, sizes, numbers. You have the repeating puddles. You have the repeating mm. stones, and you have the repeating humans. And I think that's to me what that's what makes this frame. Um, and also the road again, that's pulling your, your eye from the subject in the foreground to the subject in the mid ground to the subject in the background. Yeah. And so the, the repetition of shapes, um, is what, is what does it for me. It's, um, and it's, it's clean and solid. Boom. All right. This one's from our friend Ram and it's called, uh, fun, fun with nature. Yeah. I mean, what kid doesn't like riding a bike? So, um, you know, this reminds me of, of childhood. Uh, it's simple, clean and graphic. You have the, the Mo strips on the grass, which is very, very helpful. Yes. I think those lines that are pulling you towards the bike and then pulling you towards the tree. I love the fact that everything is, is in the lower half of the grayscale spectrum, except for the one thing, which is the kid in white and everything else is on the bottom scale. Whoever shot this, there's a photographer named Paolo Nozzolino who did a book called Far Cry with um, Steidel, the publisher. Look at Far Cry because Nozzolino's work is all in the bottom half of the spectrum. It's all shades of black and very, very little high end, but it's so beautiful. And I think if you make pictures like this and you like pictures like this, I think Nozzolino is somebody to know about. All right. This next one is interesting. It's by Chad Tobin, and it is a photograph of Robert Frank in his kitchen in Nova Scotia just Whoa. after he grabbed one of my cameras and started taking pictures. Uh, I yeah, went and looked I mean, it up, and he even wrote an article uh, about Frank. this. So, yeah. Wow. I was going to say that a uh, millisecond after seeing that, I'm like, that's Robert Frank. Um, that's This looks like it was made on 35 millimeter film. It has that distinctive film look to it. It's simple. I mean, Frank's a legend, obviously. Yeah. The light is beautiful. I love the shallow depth of field. I love the fact that he's holding up this camera. Yeah, I mean, that. this is one for the for the notebook. This is one for the gallery. And this is one for the history of photography. Because the Americans, that book is, you know, probably influenced as many people in the documentary world as any book ever done. And, um, and so, yeah, this is a great pick. I mean, this is a kind of pick every photographer I know, every legitimate professional photographer would want this print. A side note, I was talking with Annie Leibovitz once, and she said, we went to the same art and, uh, the same school, the San Francisco art Institute. And she said, who were our mentors back then? I said, Cartier Bresson. And she said, yeah. And Robert Frank, so, hey, there's at least two photographers that have been greatly influenced by this guy's work. And also he was an incredible filmmaker as well. But this is... And my, my favorite Annie Leibovitz work is the first work she ever did, which was the tour with the Stones. Exactly. And there's a picture of her on her knees in a camera store in New York, picking out a camera out of the display... And it was 35 black and white reportage and it was of the stones and it was so honest and pure and awesome yeah. and also in depth because she was with him forever. Um, and I guarantee if, if Frank was, you know, maybe that was the influence for her to work that way. Cause she well doesn't, be. you know, that's not what she's known for now, but I love that work. I yeah. love this pick. I mean, it's a fantastic that image. It really is. Okay. This next one is from Mark. Uh, and he, this is a custom made uh, motorcycle. A Ducati, no less, right? Or is that a Moto? What is that? Moto Guzzi, Ducati? I can't. I don't know, but all I know is, and I love motorcycles, and I've ridden motorcycles my whole life. I don't have one right now, but um, I look at a bike like that, and you, and if you don't ride bikes like that, you have no understanding of the power to weight ratio oh and God. the speed, and it's so terrifying, terrifyingly fast. Like, 
the last bike like that I rode, I never got out of second gear because I was so terrified of the bike. So this to me is a photograph is more of a product shot. And there's a couple of things that are nice about it is one, you have the fall colors. You're in the middle of the road. You have the dotted line leading your eye to the horizon. You have the edges of the road that are leading. It's solid. It's clean. And the photo does what it's supposed to do, which is to highlight the bike. The bike is still the primary driving factor, but you have a very nice, quiet background. Um, and then the back of my head, I'm like, oh, my God, a bike that fast with that much power on a road covered in leaves. Um, yeah, oh, that's yeah. why I don't ride a motorcycle anymore, or at least right now. They're, they, it's just terrifying to me. But um, very, very solid, great color, nice balance, not overprocessed. Um, yeah, it's good. And just be careful, man. That bike is um, quite something. We have to bring our friend Keith Code on, you know, who's trained thousands of, of riders, and he would appreciate this bike. And Moto Marini, I, yeah, I, I think I know those guys actually in Italy that make that. It's quite a machine. Yeah, scary. Yeah. All right. So this next one, uh, if you remember Nemi, this is from her father, Magnus. Magnus. Uh, this one, and they take photos together all the time. Uh, it's really fun to see uh, our favorite uh, father-daughter team. This one is images from, it's an image from the May Teo Clinic in Thailand. This clinic accepts help, accepts and helps refugees and the poor from Myanmar. Um, great, great framing. Again, you're in it. You're in a refugee or a, or a clinic, which are not known for good lighting. They typically had to have overhead lighting at best. Um, typically fluorescent. It's horrible. In color, this could be you know yellowish, greeny. You never know. So black and white was a nice choice. Um, good lens length because the shallow depth of field is eliminating the tiles on the background, which aren't helping the image at all. And it's a really nice sense of framing using the heads as a foreground. And your eye only has one place to go, which is directly to this kid's face, which is what the photographer wanted you to see. So it's clean and simple. It's a very professional kind of image. I mean, if you if you if a top photojournalist was assigned to a facility like this, you might see an image like this. It's a very, you know, a, a great way of dissecting what you have to work with, which is often not stellar in a place like this. The people are great. It's just that the conditions are typically not great to photograph in. Yeah. So you, you made the best of it. You know, Dan, at first I was going to say maybe crop the figure in the left, but then I, as I look at it, it actually forms a frame yeah. that, that makes the child really, you know, really stand out. But you're right. That if, lighting... I was going to crop, if I was going to crop one side, I'd crop the right mm. just a tiny bit. Just, you, just yeah, that little I, edge I, there. Not that I, I, I don't think it needs cropping, but if I was going to crop a side, because I do think that the, it, the person on the left anchors that side of the frame. It's really, yeah, I mean, listen, it, and it is difficult lighting, it's fluorescent or whatever, it's not yep. great lighting, but it worked really well. All right, this next one's from Don, uh, recently put up here, no caption with it, but a, a great image. Wow. Yeah, this is um, super solid. One, you have a moment, the guy's taking a drag, the smoke is a huge part of this, the hand, the gesture a foreground that he's right on top of. And sometimes people, especially new to photography, they're not comfortable getting that close to people. Um, but that's really what it takes. And then you, your foreground is, is uh, even though it's not in focus, it doesn't need to be. You know exactly what's happening. And your, your, your back, your mid-ground, which is the kid on the table, and the kid reflected in the mirror is the background. So you have three nice layers. Um, the light is solid and even. The green wall helps as well. It's a nice little bit of color. Um, yeah, it's a great, it's a great pick. I mean, it reminds me of a lot of picks I've seen of doc, doc work over the years. Um, very solid. Jared, I think we'll just take a couple more and then we're going to give away our book, right? All right. Sounds good. Uh, here's one from Max Cora, uh, photo I made of my grandmother fixing my sister's sweatpants. First time I'd seen her in almost a year. Yeah, that's so awesome. Everybody's grandma is awesome. Yeah. My grandmother used to buy us Cocoa Puffs and fireworks, right? We'd eat all the sugar, get wired, and then shoot fireworks at each other. <laughs> what a combination. And, um, she was awesome. There was nothing you, she wouldn't get for you. Um, yeah, so this is a, it's a simple photograph. The lighting is nice. You've got really nice wide bank of light coming in from the window. And what's interesting is the light is bouncing off of her white shirt and filling in on her face. 
and it's nice. It almost looks like it was lit, you know, like someone had strobes in here. Yeah. I love the fact that her feet, her legs are so short that her feet are on the, on the step of the stool. Um, and it's, it's simple and clean. There's, you know, this is a great, it's a, it's a, it's an image that your family will love forever. Her kids and grandkids and great grandkids will have this. And, um, that's all that matters. All right. I've got two more quick, uh, for us to go through some people who I've seen in the chat. Uh, this one is from Chris, uh, Rothgar. And hey, I don't Chris. remember if this one had a, okay. So this image was from my latest personal project focused on using my local neighborhood as a viewpoint of 2020 isolation. Interesting. And he plans on turning this, it's a seven month, he's seven months into this project and will soon be turning it into a, a zine. Or a zine. Oh, okay. a zine. A zine. Yeah, so it, to me, this is what Mark was mentioning earlier about maybe a transitional image. Yeah. So on the surface, like as a viewer, I'm not entirely sure, I don't know what the story is, I saw it. My first response was that I thought it was a barbed wire fence and barbed wire fencing was one of the one of the things that completely and utterly changed the face of the American West. That's when right. We invented barbed wire and people started to section it off and claim areas that changed the entire fabric of the American West. So I like this as a transitional image, and I'd be curious to see what the other surrounding images on the project are and how this fits in. Um, it's nice, shallow depth of field. It's tight. I do like the ridge line running through yeah, the, the background rim, the to give you a sense of depth. There. Yeah. Yeah. And the lighting's nice. All right. And I guess this will be our last one. This is from Richard at one of the recent protests. Yeah. I mean, the pr protesting, and I'm going to go back to that, that clarity from the clutter. Um, one of the difficult things about protests are typically they happen in, in lighting that may be good or not good. You have a ton of people holding signs that tend to be white. And if you're in the wrong kind of light, you have these glaring white signs that are impossible to do anything with. Um, but this reminds me a bit of the 1960s, the Mark Rubeau magnum photographs of the protests in 68. Um, and what you're trying to do is you're trying to make a little you're trying to find clarity within the clutter of this mass of people. And I think this is pretty successful. Um, uh, a little shallower depth of field, maybe to isolate these two women. But I think it's interesting, their choice of clothing, um, the giant set of keys dangling down on her leg. That's kind yeah, of peculiar really. that you would take all those to a protest. Um, but it's interesting. It's kind of a picture that the longer I look at it, the less important the two women in the foreground become. And I'm studying more of what's happening in the background. So yeah. it's a picture that takes a minute to consume which is not necessarily a bad thing because everyone wants such quick hits that it's nice to have an image that you study for a while. Well, Dan, this was awesome. And again, you're the first uh, ever guest critiquer we've had on the show. So we'll have to do it again. But you are Number the man. One. Thank Number you. One. Yeah. But aren't, aren't these guys amazing? What a group of people. I mean, yeah, I mean, there wasn't a bad photograph in here. There wasn't a photograph that I looked at and said, oh, my God, I don't know what to say about yeah, this. Yeah. So they're all they're all solid. I mean, way, you know, there's a, a, any one of these photographs could be interchanged with what I see at photo festivals and, um, you know, coming out of the professional industry. So just keep practicing. That's it. And listen to your hat wearing uh, your blurb hat. We really do want to work with you guys. One of the things we're going to be doing in our mentorship program is you're going to produce a book or a zine. So you have your work in publication. And this is really important. We'll get back with you on that one, Dan, real soon. But hey, yep. thank you once again. Stay safe and stay well there. And we'll see you again. Yeah, same, same to you. Uh, thanks for inviting me. Thanks, Jared and Mark and, um, and everyone else who was on the call. Great work. And I'm sure I will be back. And enjoy your weekend. You guys, absolutely. Okay, don't go away, anybody. Adios. We're going to be, adios, amigo. We're going to be giving away a copy of my book. And I got to tell you a story. So this book, you know, uh, Labor Day weekend, we said, okay, we're going to start giving it away. You guys pay the postage. We'll give you the book. And we literally blew our publisher's stock up. In other words, they couldn't keep up with it. So the book like is completely like com they didn't have any more left. 
So it's actually, I just finished this morning before the show going through a proof. There's a couple of changes I actually made in the book since I wrote it. And I quickly got those in there. They're, it's going back to print on Monday. But in the meantime, we want you guys to have this book. So we're giving you 50% off on the digital book. I don't like to call it ebook. It's a digital edition of the book. And it's actually important for you to have, even if you have the physical book, because you can carry it around and you can put it on your phone and actually refer to it in the field. If you already have one, get one for as a present, because look, we're into the holiday season here. So Jared, put the link up there. It's this Halloween weekend. I realize around the world you may not have Halloween, but we have it. We celebrate. We celebrate spooks and spirits and you know it's kind of a wild time for us but it's this weekend we're putting it on 50 percent off it's an easy bump for your you know it's not going to hit your wallet very hard inside that offer though you will see that i've created courses and a program that leads up to our mentorship program and i'd like you to look at it and seriously consider joining that so don't just buy the book Look at the rest of it in there. And Jared, we're giving one of these away right now, aren't we? Yes, we are. I've done my random number generator to pick the, out a lucky winner. The magical number generator. And here yep. we have. And our winner is Max Coria, uh, who uh, was the one that did the photo of his grandmother. So okay, congratulations. Well, well I'll be in touch with you. Since you're an AYP Club member, I will give you a message on uh, Facebook. And the nice thing is we can just email this to you and you will have access to it. So, hey, Nemi, thank you for buying when I saw that. That's really awesome. And listen, this really does help the AYP community. You know, this is pretty much a labor of love that we put on these shows and when you guys actually contribute, you know, when you buy a book, it's really for you. I mean, I'm not asking you for something, but it does help us as well. And the reason I want you to have the book is because I did over a thousand hours of interviews that went into these, my, all my books. They're all not just out of my own head. They're based on talking with people like Dan Milner and Chase Jarvis and Andy Leibowitz and all these people I've had the good fortune of talking to over the years and getting their point of view, because you can see from just what we've done with Dan this morning, the wealth of knowledge in this guy's head. It's just ridiculous, right? So it can't just stay there. We need to get it out to the rest of the world. And that's why I write books. And that's why I make courses, because I want to bring you that knowledge. Okay, well, listen, is there anything else we need to cover, Jared, before we sign off and get into the holiday mode uh... of Halloween weekend? I think that's all. Uh, keep an eye out on the weekend for yeah. our videos. And uh, join us again next week. We're going to have uh, more. So submit more of your images. We won't have Dan next week, probably. We'll have uh, some surprises. But, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll have some fun next week. It'll be great. Uh, I'm sorry for all of you who submitted photos. And we couldn't quite get to your photos. You all have such amazing work. And uh, I'll be keeping a note of those that we didn't get to, and I'll uh, try to give you priority for our next critique stream. Okay, and as always, I read your comments. You know that. So leave your comments, like the video, share. Obviously, we want you to subscribe if you haven't already done that, and enable the bell. And say this along with me, you guys. Remember to get out and capture your own images of life. Or... We've got the short version now. Capture life. Okay. Love you guys. Stay well. Stay well. Stay safe and stay creative. We'll see you really soon.